Wittenstein High Integrity Systems presents Coffee Break Training. Welcome to part 2 of the task scheduling video in the Safe RTOS Plus Trace series of Coffee Break Training. This video extends the previous discussion on task scheduling and considers what happens when a priority inversion occurs. More information and additional training sessions can be found on our website. Follow us on Twitter at Wittenstein underscore Hiss for updates on new training sessions. Safe RTOS Plus Trace gives us a great way of visualising what happens when a priority inversion occurs. This can happen in systems where two different priority tasks share a resource, such as a peripheral, often guarded by a semaphore to ensure conflicts don't occur. Imagine our system is a USB hub connected to a PC at one end, with a keyboard and a disk attached. Only one device can talk to the PC at any time. In this system, you wouldn't want a big file transfer from the disk to interfere with button presses on the keyboard. In this system, the keyboard would be high priority, while the hard disk would be low priority. A priority inversion occurs when the low priority is holding the semaphore. In this example here, let's say a file copy is underway, and the high priority tries to gain it because you type something on the keyboard, but is blocked. While the low priority task is trying to complete, it is interrupted by a medium priority task. Normally this would be the expected behaviour, but in this instance by preventing the low priority task from completing and giving back the semaphore, the high priority task is also delayed. There are various mechanisms that can guard against priority inversion, but they can add significant overheads to the normal RTOS operation, and even then still may not always be successful. These protection mechanisms can also have more subtle side effects, such as creating non-deterministic behaviour. This is particularly dangerous for safety critical applications, where it may not be possible to test all cases of a non-deterministic system. For these reasons, Safe RTOS does not guard against priority inversions. Instead, to avoid these scenarios occurring, it is important to, con to consider shared memory access to resources such as peripherals during the application design phase. In a running system, Safe RTOS Plus Trace presents an easy to understand view of the system behaviour over a period of time, which might be hard to trace with traditional debugging techniques. This video shows what a simple priority inversion looks like in the Safe RTOS Plus Trace GUI. We will then briefly cover a couple of mechanisms to avoid them occurring. Here's the overall view of a situation where priority inversion occurs. We're using the Safe RTOS Plus Trace feature that allows user-defined event logging to help highlight what's happening. This is the low priority task code. The initial key receive is a synchronization mechanism. We can see the task then prints a message to the trace buffer and takes the semaphore, guarding the shared peripheral, before running for a while. Finally, it gives the semaphore back, again printing a message to the trace buffer. And here's the high priority task code. Having given the low priority task the OK to run via this synchronization queue, it then sleeps for one tick to allow the low priority task to take the semaphore. It then prints a message to the trace buffer before trying to take the semaphore itself. It will wait up to 100 ticks before failing in this call. Once the timeout expires or it gains the semaphore, it then prints a final message to the trace buffer. Finally, here's the medium priority task. It has been paused for a while, but once this delay expires, it then calls a function that consumes the C CPU for a while. Let's go through that again. The high priority task sends a message via a queue to the low priority task as a synchronization mechanism. It then delays for one tick. The low priority task has been waiting on this message and unblocks after nearly 30 milliseconds. Because the high priority task is currently blocked, and so is the medium task, the low priority task is able to run, and it takes the semaphore. The low priority task now has some processing to do before releasing the semaphore. On the next tick, the high priority task delay completes, so a context switch occurs to the high priority task. It tries to take the semaphore, and finds it's not available, so it yields, thus allowing the low priority task to resume. On the next tick, the medium priority task finishes its delay, and as per the scheduler policy of running the highest priority task able to run, the medium priority task starts running. 
So now the high priority task is still blocked, waiting for the semaphore, and the low priority task which is holding it isn't even running. The situation only resolves itself once the medium priority task completes its processing and yields, thus allowing the low priority task to finish and give back the semaphore. The trace now shows in turn that the high priority task has become unblocked, which then performs a queue received to take the semaphore. We then see the message high pri got sem added to the trace buffer. We haven't shown the associated code for events after this to try and keep things as simple as we can. There's also some other information in the trace that I'd like to highlight. We can see from the trace that the high priority task has been delayed for just over four and a half milliseconds waiting for the semaphore, although the low priority task has only accounted for just over a millisecond of this. And this millisecond is calculated approximately looking at the two blocks where the low priority task was running after the high priority task requested the semaphore. We've shown in this session how a priority inversion can occur and how task priorities affect runtime behavior. The safe RTOS plus trace GUI allows queue and semaphore block times to be easily analyzed and application delays to be traced. Adding custom user events can make it even easier to understand application flow and task interaction. We mentioned at the start of this video that there are techniques to avoid priority inversions apart from good application design. Before finishing, I'd just like to briefly cover a couple of these. Firstly is to use critical sections. These are sections of code where interrupts are disabled, including the timer interrupt that causes context switches. This means a task is guaranteed to continue executing until the end of the critical section. The downside of this is that it can delay responses to interrupts, so this is generally only suitable for very quick operations. An alternative technique is the gatekeeper task. This is a high priority task that sits between any other tasks that wish to share a resource. The gatekeeper's only function is to access the shared peripheral. Usually messages will be sent to it from other tasks via a queue. This has the benefit of allowing normal interrupt behavior to continue, although it does introduce memory overhead of an additional task in the system. This approach is often used in the safe RTOS demo applications where several tasks may wish to print status messages to an LCD screen on the board. Thanks again for watching. Remember to sign up on Twitter for updates on new Coffee Break training videos and more. In our next session, we'll look at how to create periodic tasks and the different delay functions available in the Safe RTOS API.